Top story, the recent spike in COVID Delta variant cases has left health officials struggling to convey to the public that they don't know how to convey things to the public. Chief Medical Advisor Anthony Fauci took a break from strategy meetings for his upcoming Fauci Plus streaming service to say this. John, I don't think we're going to see lockdowns. I think we have enough of the percentage of people in the country, not enough to crush the outbreak, but I believe enough to not allow us to get into the situation we were in last winter. But things are going to get worse. Wow, what a great messenger to vaccine-hesitant Republicans convinced Fauci personally nursed the bat that launched the virus. Carol, obviously the government keeping Americans alive is a third rail in politics. Is it time for the administration to resort to trickery? I think it's pretty important that uh, Dr. Fauci is allowed to communicate without a muzzle and let the public know that the Delta variant is a worry if you've not been vaccinated and people need to get vaccinated as he urges over and over again. I think the Biden administration has great messaging strategy, at least when it comes to volume and variety. You know, I hate to go nuclear here, but if you're going to be irresponsible and not get vaccinated, then you can't come to my party on my new submarine, the Red Hoptober. Real original. Yeah, gives a shit. Okay, fine. More Sean Bon Bonneries for me. Beautiful image. A rich man alone on a submarine eating chocolate named after a dead man. Now, moving on. The White House and Congress failed to stop the COVID-induced eviction moratorium from ending, leading to a huge sigh of relief from our nation's poor, put-upon landlords. Coming to the defense of unreasonable shelter addicts is Democratic Congresswoman and rumored terrorist Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. The House should reconvene and call this vote and extend the moratorium. There's about 11 million people that are behind on their rent at risk of eviction. First, we were supposed to care about 600,000 Americans, and now it's up to 11 million. Where does it end? Philip, is it right to evict Congress from their August resort bookings and force them back to the Capitol when the worst case scenario is a nationwide outdoor slumber party? <laughs> you know, you're, you're smart to raise that question. Goddamn right. Member of Congress, Cory Bush, uh, a freshman a Democrat elected out of Missouri, who was homeless before she became a, a politician who's been sleeping uh, out on the steps of the Capitol the last few days trying to draw attention to this. And she is saying shame on Congress for taking that recess in August. They should be getting back here and working until that eviction moratorium is extended. Well, I hope this push is what convinces these 11 million people to finally buy a place. Absolutely. And let's not forget that eviction is an extremely effective punishment for people who are guilty of being children. You know, thankfully, all the rent relief money that states failed to distribute can now go to the sheriffs processing these evictions. A lot of these renters have dogs, and that requires a lot of bullets. Oh, this eviction thing is not a problem. American back seats are the most comfortable in the world. Moving on, time to grab your sunscreen and have the Cabana Boys slather it on your disgusting back because former President Barack Obama is hosting a 60th birthday party for nearly 500 host organisms on Martha's Vineyard. Here's White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki winning gold in the 20th 2021 Mental Gymnastics. Is President Obama setting the wrong example about how serious COVID-19 is by hosting a big birthday party with hundreds of people this week? Well, I would certainly refer you to uh, the team who is working for my former boss to give you more specifics of what the protocols are in place. But I would note first that former President Obama has been a huge advocate of individuals getting vaccinated. Uh, when CDC provided, has provided, what CDC has provided guidance on is for indoor settings in high or substantial high zones of COVID cases. This event, according to all the public reporting, is outdoors and in a moderate zone. Now, Philip, there's a lot of outrage over this party for defying CDC guidelines. Are critics just jealous that they don't get to see John Kerry with crusted cocktail sauce in the corners of his mouth? <laughs> you know, it's got, there are going to be a lot of celebrities at that party. We're hearing Bruce Springsteen's going to be there, Steven Spielberg, uh, and the party is going on uh, despite the COVID outbreak. It certainly is a politically, optically speaking, a bad look for the Obamas, but he, he's already been president and he doesn't seem to care much and he wants to celebrate that 60th birthday. Your jealousy is embarrassing, Philip. Christ. You know, this will help the public get used to seeing the wealthy flee to an island every time there's another extinction level event. And now 
for the latest on former President Trump, whose New Jersey golf resort's omelet station is considered by 40% of Americans to be the global seat of power. Trump's daily political life was described this way by former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, who apparently hasn't noticed that he stopped getting paycheck direct deposits to his account seven months ago. We met with some of our cabinet members tonight. We wouldn't be meeting tonight if we weren't making plans to move forward in a real way and with President okay. Trump at the head of that ticket. Trump's meeting with a fake cabinet does raise questions about whether it's time for his fake vice president to invoke the fake 25th Amendment due to his real brain holes. Now, Philip and Carol, you are the number one New York Times best-selling authors of I Alone Can Fix It, Donald J. Trump's catastrophic final year in stores now. Now, do you two believe Trump will ever stop running for president? And if he does, what will that mean for Rudy Giuliani's ability to pay his liver specialist bills? <laughs> Well, you know, Donald Trump seemed like a person who wanted to run for office again, except for the fact that when Phil and I went to interview him at Mar-a-Lago, he is acting like he's still president and doesn't need to run again. When he comes out on the patio, uh, all of his guests greet him with a standing ovation and they play hail to the chief. It's hard to know if he's still president in his mind and in the mind of others, or if he's still running. Now, back in mid-November, Trump installed a number of loyalists at the Pentagon. Please reassure our viewers that Trump's actions were just part of a military exercise, testing what we'd do if he did that like he did. <laughs> you know, it, it actually wasn't an exercise. It really happened. Um, he installed a lot of people that made the actual leaders of the Pentagon who'd actually been to battle, been to combat, very nervous. They started to think that some of those loyalists might be trying to get their hands on the guns, trying to get their hands on the sort of levers of power and help Trump stay in office. It was actually quite serious and chilling time. You know, I'm still skeptical. If a coup did involve our military, it'd probably get bogged down in Washington for 20 years before they surrender the Air and Space Museum to the Taliban.